What's up, Diecast Collectors? This is OBB, the Diecast News Guy. Today, we're going to be kicking off the first of many Wave 2 NASCAR Authentics 2020 uh, reviews for you guys. So, I know you guys are looking forward to that. And to kick things off, guys, uh, there are going to be two that I'm not going to be reviewing since I already did reviews on them. And that's the Kyle Busch Interstate Batteries 2020 Diecast and the Coil of Joy Scooby Dooby Doo car, which I which I just mentioned, I picked both those cars up at my 07 Race Collectibles Hall video, if you guys haven't seen that yet. I'll probably do another one, considering that we're going to be on a drought season. We're, he we're entering the drought season for NASCAR Authentics, since, you know, nothing about Wave 3 yet. But anyways, guys, today we're reviewing a car that not too many people are familiar with, that this car was released in Wave 2, because uh, Wave 2 looked a little short. A lot of people were wondering, hey, we usually get about, like, uh, that we only had, like, uh, what, like, eight releases, and plus the liquid color chase piece, uh, a lot of people are like, hey, there's one die cast missing. When, what's that? Well, it's this controversial drive right here, and it is on Kyle Larson's 2019 uh, McDonald's McDelivery Chevrolet Camaro ZL1 for Chip Ganassi Racing. So, yeah, this car is quite dated, I will say that. But, um,. Man, what a tough, uh, what, what a tough time to be uh, to to uh, <laughs> to have this car announced, guys. This is the second time in a row that this driver, um, if you guys remember from NASCAR Authentics 2019 and Wave Four with the whole DC Solar uh, controversy with the FBI raiding the DC Solar car, um, remember that car from Wave Four of NASCAR Authentics 2019 that they did announce that car as well. Well, talk about deja vu, guys. They did it again, but this time it was with the driver and not the sponsor. I mean, wow, uh, <laughs> definitely has a. Kyle Larson has not been a favorite when it comes to NASCAR Authentics, even for the announcements, but this is still going to be a really cool diecast that I'm looking forward to review, as it is pretty appropriate to uh, do this diecast review, since we are at the, we just got done watching the Indianapolis uh, Brickyard race, uh, I can only imagine who won that race, because I'm watching it while I'm reviewing this car, so what a savage I am. But anyways guys, let's go ahead and kick off this diecast review and the official unboxing of the Kyle Larson McDelivery car for um, 2019. Alrighty guys, we got this diecast out box and before getting started on this diecast review for NASCAR Authentics 2020 Wave 2 of the Kyle Larson McDonald's McDelivery Scheme. We're going to be looking at the little accessory that comes to this and it is probably my least favorite accessory that we got so far for the current NASCAR Authentics Waves. Um, don't mind the diecast renders, but just, uh, <laughs> I said it once, I say again, if we ever get the diecast, what's the point of a diecast render? I mean, let's be honest, we only like a diecast render to see what the actual car looks like and then once we actually get the actual photos of the diecast, then these things become pretty redundant. But whatever, though, still a cool little um, piece that you can show off in your stop motions or whatever, but not really a big fan of these, but still is cool. I mean, it is a diecast after all. Diecast magnet. But back to the diecast, guys. Uh, this is not an exclusive Kyle Larson car compared to the DC Solar car from last year, which was supposed to be his 2019 scheme, but you know what happened with DC Solar. But um, right off the back, I see it's some paint chips right there on the, um, on the front end of this car so nice job tires of course not a big fan of but this paint scheme guys i really do like it a lot kyle larson only drove this paint scheme once last year and that was ironically at the brickyard 400 race or whatever the hell it's called i still call it the brickyard 400 even though it's probably the least desirable uh race uh when it comes to the big races in nascar um as you guys know i mean well i mean the co 600 has been a hit or miss too but you want to talk about boring races the brick car definitely has lost his charm man <laughs> it definitely has um not as good as what it used to be, guys. As you guys know, Indianapolis is definitely known for these guys right here, the Indy cars. I mean, I will say it, just saying. I am a NASCAR IndyCar fan, so. But this diecast is pretty cool, as you guys know. Matt Kenseth also brought this. They brought the scheme back again for this year with Kyle Larson. Uh, this is actually uh, just take off the Mc Delivery sponsorship, and uh, that's basically the uh, 2020 McDonald's scheme. But uh, <laughs> which is pretty cool. Really cool. Uh, but as you guys know, the McDonald's scheme from this year, I believe, did got canceled because, you know, Larson's no longer the driver of that car. Uh, but Matt Kenseth, uh, actually, um, he actually drove the McDelivery scheme, I think, three times already, including the race that we're watching right now, the Brickyard 400, um, or the Big Machine Vodka race, or the fuck it's called. <laughs> but I think he also drove this at the Talladega race, where he crashed in, and also at the Coke 600 race. But uh, pretty cool. I think the only difference is that there's a little more red right here, and uh, of course, no NASCAR Heat 4 logo, because Heat 5 is coming out soon. Uh, let the hype begin. <laughs> and of course the mcdonald's logo uh, we don't have the big m anymore uh, the m actually is normal size and has make delivery on the hood so um i think this year's looks a lot more cleaned up i mean i don't mind this scheme as well i mean there's a lot more going on with this paint scheme i do like it a lot the addition of white really goes well with this scheme even though it does look like a lot's been going on but i do like the yellow 42 on that it's like a dandelion yellow 42 pretty cool i do like that a lot 
Uh, but just so ironic that this car uh, never got uh, announced on the fix. <laughs> uh, and and, and um, when I uh, when people started finding this at the uh, retail store, the Lionel Race retail store, they're like, oh, it's a Larson car. I was like, can't seem not surprised considering that this was announced right right or right before it or during or after the whole controversy with you know larson but um we'll say though man i mean larson did ran pretty well uh with this car uh unfortunately he uh he only left five laps at the brickyard 400 in this car uh before getting his car loose coming out to the back stretch um and uh yeah just uh completely lost control of the car and had a pretty vicious hit i mean probably wasn't as bad as the talladega hit from his clover car but Yikes, that was pretty bad, but I really do like the paint scheme a lot, guys. Really is. And now time to do the side side comparison of his other McDonald's scheme, which was his primary McDonald's scheme. Um, paint scheme is actually, uh, besides the hood, it's actually quite different, as you can see right there. We got a lot more going on. Um, you know, I think the front, it's kind of like, I don't know, it, 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 what the big delivery scheme looks like, it's kind of like Kyle Larson's and Bubba Wallace's McDonald's cars from last year. Kind of had a baby. But I think this car actually turns out way better than Bubba Wallace's. Because you guys remember, I did do a rant diecast yesterday on the Bubba Wallace McDonald's scheme. Because, godly almighty, that car just looked awful. But they both have a matte finish to them. But I think the matte finish shows off quite nicer on the primary McDonald's scheme. But, as you can see, I think a lot of people definitely love the McDe delivery scheme. Because they put it as primary for this year. For Larson and Kenseth. Because, remember, there were uh, the Larson did drove the McDonald's car before he you know <laughs> got fired from chip ganassi racing which is a shame i think he was gonna have a breakout season this year um with all the runs he was having but you know what one little mistake will cost you and that's unfortunately what that stupid mistake did i will admit what he said was quite stupid but we on from that now um it is the past but um I really am loving this paint scheme a lot, guys. Uh, even the black outline where the 42 is really goes well. I think if, if there was no outline, it would look kind of odd. But I don't know, guys. That yellow 42 is definitely giving me some Jamie McMurray vibes. It kind of does a little bit, guys. I mean, I don't know. Am I, am I going a little crazy? But I don't know. That yellow 42 definitely is giving me some McMurray vibes. I will say that. So definitely works out pretty well. I do like that a lot. Um... Of course, my best friend Derek Lewis is considered. This is basically his ex. <laughs> so every time he refers to as ex, I'm like, no, not his girlfriend. That's his ex driver. <laughs> oh, Lewis is gonna kick my ass after this review. I tell you that. <laughs> He's like, forehead. I'm gonna kick your forehead. <laughs> uh, I was supposed to get. I was supposed to get him on this diecast review, but I'll probably do it on another one. Maybe with the Rosenquist review because he is a Ganassi fan. And by the way, uh, let's get that let's get that guy to 20 subs. I mean, here he has 18 subscribers on YouTube, so let's get him to 20, and I don't know, maybe 30 and 40, 50. Let's hopefully I'll upload, uh, upload a first YouTube video soon because I always got to help my partners out there, my good buds. But um, yeah, I definitely do recommend getting this diecast, guys. I was thinking about getting this car in the Gold Series, but I had a funny feeling they were going to release in NASCAR Authentics. Um, unfortunately, <laughs> with everything happened, we never knew that this car was getting released. Um, but uh, I believe also there's a Monster Energy logo that's missing. But luckily, um, Lionel was consistent. And they didn't sneak in a Monster Energy logo on the B post like they did with the Dean Burrito car from this year. The Menards car. Which that still surprised me. I didn't point that out in my review. But my good buddy Diecast Buffet did. Wow, look at that paint chip on the side skirt. Gotta love that. Um, and the windshield is a little loose right here. Pretty typical NASCAR thanks quality. When you pay $5 for Diecast. Probably can't complain. But... I do like to anyways. But yeah, guys, this is going to be a relatively short diecast review because I have a lot more others to review. So I hope you guys enjoyed this diecast review of the Kyle Larson 2019 McDonald's McDelivery Chevrolet Camaro ZL1 uh, for Chip Ganassi Racing. If you guys enjoyed this diecast review along with other NASCAR diecast reviews, well, what the hell are you waiting for? Subscribe today, guys. And you guys stay up to date on my latest diecast reviews and many more. But until then, guys, this has been OBB. Thank you guys so much for watching. And thank you guys for 3,700 subscribers. We are 300 away to 4K. So let's get it done. And maybe I'll have a nice surprise for you guys in the future. Could feature what's in my room. So, <laughs> but anyway, guys, this is OBB. I will catch you guys on another diecast review very soon.